I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. Yesterday, I went into a dollar store for the first time in years, and I was kind of blown away by what I saw. On the one end, you have no-name brands for, I mean, we're talking food here, that's like a dollar or a dollar twenty-five. And on the other hand, you do have some products like Halls, um, maybe some other brands that are selling products for a dollar twenty-five also. And so I started thinking, okay, if Halls sends food, let's just go with Halls or whoever else, the, the, maybe the percentage of name brands is very low in a dollar store. But if they send a shipment of product to a dollar store, and then they send a shipment to a grocery store like Meyer or Safeway or Ralph's or Whole Foods or whatever, the prices are dramatically different. But why? I was reading something about it and, and also one of the reasons things are so low is because they have like n no label uh, products that somebody makes it for them. They imitate Frosted Flakes or macaroni and cheese or whatever and they put it up there and they put, slap a new label on it. So instead of Fruit Loops, it's Fruit Rings or whatever, but it's dramatically lower because if you go into a Kroger, you know, their brand is much cheaper than, than Kellogg's or Post or whatever, but it's still uh, higher than a dollar store. It's probably twice as high. So then I started to have all these thoughts about why aren't more people shopping here? I get that maybe it's not the healthiest place in the world to shop. I mean, if you're buying a frozen pizza for $1.25, it's probably not going to be made with the best ingredients. But as usual, it seems to come down to the idea of why can't we figure out some sort of a, a common ground where we can say, okay, wait, this, these dollar stores are able to produce food, like a frozen pizza that's $1.25, or a bag of fish or whatever it is. And other stores are producing food that's four, five, ten times as expensive. Can we kind of like meet in the middle here and maybe make it healthy and, and, and make sure that it's, it's uh, profitable for the farmers who are making it, but also affordable for the customers? Am I crazy or is this like a weird kind of thing that I'm having, but it, it doesn't seem like some sort of a midlife grocery crisis. It feels like I was just standing there in the dollar store thinking, I feel like I stepped into another dimension. When I, where I grew up in Michigan, it's about an hour and a half west of Detroit, and where I grew up, their dollar store started popping up in the last few years. My parents owned the house, and I remember my siblings and I were kind of like, this is not a good sign. Like, not that we didn't want people to be able to find food to afford, but like, I would imagine dollar stores only move into areas where they think like, here's a market we can really, uh, you know, sell some product. And so it wasn't like I had like a stigma against it. I mean, we all kind of have this thing. We see a dollar store and we think poor people, poor food, whatever. And it's probably true in terms of the quality of the food. But again, it seems like we could have some sort of a compromise. I mean, people are in there because they need to be. It was so calm and it, it almost felt like, uh, I don't want to be offensive here, but it almost felt like a charity shop, but where everyone was respectful and just thankful that it exists in like a strip mall or something, rather than go to another store where your, your grocery bill is going to be, I don't know, five to 10 times higher probably. And so this conversation about, whether we can find a good compromise between having uh, healthy food, but also at, a, at an affordable price for people, um, finding a common ground, which would involve a political solution, which makes everything uh, go out the window. Uh, it reminded me of a conversation similar, but on a different topic, transportation, uh, between Bill Maher and Joe Rogan. California tried to build a railroad. They wanted to build a rail line between L.A. and San Francisco. Made sense. It's a big, long state and cars and blah, blah, good for the environment. And it was when they finally pulled the plug, because it just became too uh, uh, ridiculous, it was at $200 million a mile. Now, France, <laughs> France built uh, France, a country not unknown to uh, have unions and workers' rights. Very big over there in Europe, right? Workers' rights, unions. I mean, they're always on strike. Uh, always on strike in Europe. And they talk with their hands. Okay. So <laughs> France 
again, a very unionized country did it for like one seventh. That's how bad. One seventh? The, yeah, something like that. Uh, which again is something like fifteen million dollars a mile or whatever it was. Right. But I mean, two hundred million dollars a mile, and it was only to finally it was only to connect like Bakersfield to, to I don't know, uh, Pacoima or something, and they couldn't even do that. Were you in Boston when they were doing the big dig? I was never in Boston. I mean, I played Boston, loved playing the town, but I've never lived there. But I know of it. I remember 60 Minutes doing a story on it. Yes, the big <laughs> dig. It was, and they did finally finish it. They did. But it was so late, and it was so, they yes. robbed so much money from it. <laughs> oh, I'm sh- exactly. It was that was the whole thing about right. the corruption oh, involved. Oh, of course. In that. Yeah. And it was really just a short tunnel un- from the airport. Mm-hmm. Was it under Logan? One of the few airports in the country that's right next to the city. Yep. Like only like there in Vegas do you fly in right, right. and you're like five minutes from yeah. downtown. It's awesome. And I think it, that, it was not where it was connecting. Yeah, the they town. were trying to lighten up some of that traffic. And right. they completed it, but it was like, I mean, they were doing it when I was there in the 80s. And then they were right. still doing it when I came back. I, I'm, what year was the Big Dig completed? I want to say it was like right. at least 10 years late. 2004. Oh, yeah. 2004 they completed. Yeah, yeah. so oh, seven. <laughs> so they were doing it when I lived yeah. there. I mean, this look the, you know, when I hear about build back better, um, okay, look, certainly the country needs to get rebuilt. I mean, the infrastructure is a mess. Yeah, but I'm thinking always like, when you give me a number, it's like, it just seems like you pulled it out of your ass. You know, it's going to cost one point five billion. We know that for it, 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 and it came in right at that <laughs> round number, huh? Yeah. To rebuild this or something, and and uh, are we going over this with a fine tooth? Are, there, are we really seeing that it? What if we only spent one point two billion uh, or trillion? I'm, I'm undercounting it. Uh, what if we only spent one point two trillion? Uh, what would we be sacrificing? Anything? Where? Because so much of that money is going to consultants yeah. and just sub- siphoned off by all the <laughs> pigs at the trough, all snorting this shit up with their big fucking snouts. Yeah. And there's very few people that are saying that. But right. that's, that's exactly that's, what's happening. I, that to me is not a Republican idea. Right. It's just, I mean, it's just. Common it, sense. Yes. Okay. So I found a Forbes article here that says it costs like $154 million. Um, Per mile, but 154 million. Bill Maher says 200 million. I mean, once you're up there, it's kind of like, who cares? I, clearly, it's it's uh, it's insane the way that we do things. We can never get anything done, and that's why we have these different universes that are existing. Like you have the Dollar Tree universe or the Dollar Store universe, and then you have like the regular grocery store universe, the Safeway, the Meyer, the Kroger, the Publix, wherever you are. I used to live in the South. And then you have your next tier, which is like Whole Foods and Fresh Time and all these, you know, uh, sort of upper scale things where people are pro- probably getting more organic stuff, but there are people who don't really need to look at their bank account. Um, it seems like we could be able to take something. Let's take the best of this and the best of that and put it together and like we'll make this these these stores or we'll make it so that anybody can open a store with these elements and can get things at these prices and make a living as a store, make a good profit or whatever. I'm not talking about government control. I'm just saying as a society, it seems like we could come up with something better, right? All right. I have to know what you think in the comments below. Please leave a comment. I really want to hear what you have to say. Please subscribe if you can and patreon.com slash arthouse43 if you want to support further. All right. Until next Friday. I'll be back.